All right. So, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Sean Miller, Hipster Viz Ninja, coming at you with another walkthrough of uh, week 10, even though I called it week 9 because I just got too excited and forgot to change it up. So, this is actually week 10, but it's called week 9, so whatever. Uh, Workout Wednesday 2020. Uh, we're dealing with spatial calculations, uh, the new buffer calculation, as a matter of fact. So, uh, let's jump right into it. So as you know, we have uh, two challenges uh, this week, optional. Uh, I'm going to walk through both uh, in sections there. So the first one, we're going to talk about the first one, which is uh, using, basically isolating, uh, isolating points within a buffer zone. So uh, this, is the, this is the final product. So each of the large orange circles is going to be a uh, is going to be a hotel, and then the gray circles are going to be the pubs that are within those buffer zones. So if we hover on one of these orange, we can see through the tooltip there are two pubs represented by the two circles uh, within 500 meters, which is our buffer radius uh, of this hotel, the Hoxton uh, shortage. And we can tell what those hotels are sorted by their distance. So how did we create this? Uh, let's jump right into it. So uh, we've got, if we go to this, if we go into our sheet here, the very first thing we need to do uh, is we need to basically get our data joined properly. So if we go in here to show you what this is about, uh, let's go edit the data source. We've got a pubs, uh, CSV and a hotel's CSV, and what I'm doing, the join here, is uh, we're doing a, an intersect join on two spatial calculations. So on the pub side, we are just simply doing a make point function uh, where we're going to take our latitude and longitude, stick them together, and we're going to create a spatial, uh, a spatial point, uh, which, which does that. And then our other side, the hotel side, this is where we're going to use that new buffer calculation. So the buffer is the syntax, and then what you get is there you have to you have to make a point um, with the buffer. So that's kind of where it's basically the centroid of your uh, of your buffer. And uh, so I'm doing a make point for the latitude and longitude of each hotel, uh, and then I have to put in an integer which is, I've just defaulted this to 500, uh, and then we need to have some sort of a unit of measure. And right now I'm just choosing meters because we're over in the UK, uh, so it makes sense to use uh, that unit of measurement. So once we've done that, basically what we've done is we're doing an intersect, which uh, basically what it's going, what, what Tableau is going to do is take the all points from our pubs that are within a 500 meter radius of our make point, uh, and we're going to eliminate any and all other points. So you can see that we end up with 17 rows. So what we end up with, one row represents a pub that is within 500 meters of a hotel and the hotel that it is in with uh, that it's within. So now that we've got that all set up, we're ready to go. And again, because we have 17 records, um, 17 number of records, uh, we can just pull in our uh, number of records to get the actual number of marks. We don't need to do any special calculation uh, to account for you know, an extra hotel or an extra mark in there because we've done an inner, because we're doing an inner join, uh, everything's on the same row. <clears throat> so we just drag number of records onto text to get that label there. Uh, but other things, so once you've done that, now one thing to keep in mind is I did this join uh, using uh, calculated fields, right? So if we go back, you can see that these fields, these this join, these were join calculations. Both of these were join calculations, and those do not get populated through into our data source. They're just used in the join. So 
you basically have to remake those points uh, whenever you um, you have to remake these points whenever you get into your data source. And so you can see these, uh, if we just look at one of these, you can see I've just done a make point uh, lat long for my hotels, which you can see up here. That's the fields that I'm calling right there. And then I have the same thing for my pubs. So I'm using the lat longs from my pubs. And then I just did a simple buffer calculation, which is again, the exact same. So this is where you can make this part in the data source. You can make this as, as big or as small as you want. Uh, however, you could even parameterize. You could even parameterize this if you wanted to, but that's only going to that's only going to change the radius on the view. It will not translate to your join. So currently, current state, um, we Tableau does not support parameterizing the join calculations. So if you're doing an intersect join like this, whatever you put in your join criteria is what you're going to be stuck with. So just keep that in mind uh, if you ever start going down this road. So, uh, but really simple. So to create the map, uh, you put your buffer, cal you're using the generated latitude longitude uh, for these. So this is one thing that kind of tripped me up when I started first doing this, was I tried to use the, the given Latin lawn uh, that I pulled in from my data source. But because we're using spatial calculations, uh, we can uh, use the latitude and longitude that's generated by Tableau. All right, so we put the buffer calculation on the map. That's what gives us this. I put the hotel name on detail for my tooltip, and then I used, uh, I basically did the same thing. I did the pub point as, uh, as my detail, put the pub name in there uh, to get that. Uh, and then I just did a, dis a distance calculation, I need, and I needed that for my tooltip. So if I go look at my tooltip, if we unhide, my sheet. This is simply just a list of all the pubs that came in like that and uh, basically descending, uh, sort of descending, right? And then I just did a, and then by embedding that into my worksheet, when I filter, if we look at this, so one thing to keep in mind here uh, is so I just set my here's my sheet name so publish tooltip and then the field that I'm going to be filtering on is just the hotel name uh, so I'm only filtering on the hotels that are in each row and that is how you can use buffer calculations to isolate members uh, isolate points within a buffer radius so the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the Jedi Challenge. So this one is a little bit more challenging, um, not in terms of uh, difficult calculations, the amount of complexity and different moving parts to this challenge. So basically, if we look at this, we've got a um, we've got a map. Each point on here is a each red point is a pub. It's colored uh, in descending order. Uh, or ascending order, I should say, ascending order uh, by distance from a selected point um, and sized um, as well. Uh, and then you can change your buffer radius down here. And we were able to do all that sorting and selecting by this uh, floating uh, container. So we've got uh, horizontal radio buttons that we can change the sort of this field. Uh, we can do it by the number of ratings, the price rating, uh, or the Yelp rating, um, the number of star ratings. So, and as you switch, as you click on different hotels, uh, and if we move our box, you can see that my hotel radius, or my, ho my selected hotel changed, as did all of my other points according to that. So how did I build this? So let's jump into this one. Now we're using a different data source, so let's go look at that. In the first challenge, we had, we're joining each two, and essentially what we've done here is we've unioned each of those together. 
each of those data sources together. So we have only two fields of Latin long, and then we have this new field called location type, whether it's a hotel or a pub. Um, and we have basically all the same uh, information here. So that's what the data source looks like. So in order to do this type of thing, the first thing that we need to do is we need to isolate the hotels from the pubs. So what I did here is I basically created um, if location type equals uh, hotel, then give me the, the hotel latitude. And then I just did that for each one. So I have hotel longitude, pub latitude, pub longitude. And then from there, we're able to make our, uh, you can make your pub point here. So make point using my pub lat and my pub long. And again, we're just using those fields where I did the if statement uh, in there as well. Then I have, then from there, what I did is I also separated the hotel name uh, and the pub names, and then I created this hotel parameter, um, which is just going to be all of those different hotels there. And then what I was able to do is my uh, selected point, which is going to be this radius, which is going to be this gray circle, that selected hotel. So if my hotel parameter equals my hotel name, then give me the hotel latitude. And again, I have to fix that to the entire, I'm doing a fixed min calculation uh, so that I get that value on every single row. Uh, and that's what allows us later on to do the distance calculation because I need to have those two points. I need to have those two points on each row in our data set. So that's what that's how I'm able to fix that. I use the the fixed calculation. So I'm doing a make point for hotel latitude, hotel longitude, and then from there, the only other thing that I did is uh, created this distance calculation. And again, I'm just doing the selected point as my beginning point and the pub point, and I'm doing the distance in meters. So that is what's able to populate uh, the color and the size scale. So now as I flip my hotel parameter here, you can see the size of the circles are changing as well as the color because they're changing based on that rate, that distance calculation. So that's basically how you build the map. Uh, but now, uh, which is really simple, so it's just a dual axis map, one we're using the hotel points um, and the hotel uh, the hotel buffer calculation let's look at that is going to be the buffer of just the selected point right so if you remember the buffer syntax is you need to have a make you need to have a point a, a spatial point as your reference as your centroid and then the radius here, I've parameterized that radius to just be anything that I want, uh, and then my unit of measurement is going to be meters. So that's how I'm able to get one point in there, as I've just told Tableau. Make a hotel buffer for only the selected point. So to get, the, to get this kind of discovery uh, worksheet in here, again, a very simple bar chart um, with all of my different uh, with all of my different fields. So what I'm able to do now is I have a, I need to be able to dynamically sort, and we've done this on a few other challenges. Being able to dynamically sort using parameter actions, uh, what that is is first it's we're going to create a sort calculation uh, and a sort parameter. So those are the two things that you need. So I just have a simple, param a simple sort parameter here we'll look at. Alongside my, alongside my sort calculation. So literally, it's just a value. There's, it's not even a list because I'm going to be changing this dynamically through actions. So it doesn't even really matter uh, what it is. All I'm telling Tableau in this calculated field is what to translate this value into for each different value here. So. When my parameter sort value is one, 
then I want it to be the Yelp number of ratings. When it's two, I want it to be the actual Yelp rating, the number of stars. Um, the Yelp number of rating is the number of ratings that they've received. And then for uh, when it's number three, I want it to be this pricing sort, but I want it to be in descending, I want it to be in ascending order. So I want, when I sort on this, I want the lowest, I want the cheapest hotels to be at the top and the most expensive to be at the bottom. Uh, so I have to do this negative calculation in, in order to do that. Now that I've got that, what I'm able to do, as you can see here, my hotel name is sorted on that field, that sort calc field that we just created. So now the last thing I wanted to show you is how to do this. So what you can do is you can create a very simple Excel just an Excel file. Uh, we'll just create new. And you can just call it whatever you want. So I have value, and this is going to tie back to our sort parameter down here, right? Uh, so I have values one, two, and three. So we'll just put one, two, three. And then our text is going to be the uh, number of ratings the Yelp rating, and the price. And then what you can do is you can just copy and paste that uh, into your workbook, or you can save this off and then bring it in as a secondary data source. So you can see I have my sort parameter da uh, data source here. What you're able to do uh, is I just have my text field there. I have my, uh, my axis there. So I'm basically doing a on a circle, and then I have this sort shape to just does my sort parameter value equal the value that I've uh, given it in that data source. So is it a one, is it a two, is it a three? Putting that on shape will give me my different shape. So a filled circle for true, uh, open circle for false. Now that I'm back, now that I've got all my pieces, I'm ready to create my actions. So there's two actions. So I've got this first one, which is my sort. So I'm gonna select my sort parameter. Uh, I'm gonna select the sort sheet. That's going to target the sort parameter. And that's going, and the field that I'm going to do that, uh, use to fill that parameter is my value. So that's the first one. And then the second one is I'm going, when I select my hotel discovery, I want my hotel parameter to be filled with this hotel name field. And that's how I'm getting it from this, right? So when I click on this, it's going to take this hotel name and it's going to insert it into this parameter. And by doing that, it will find, it will change the selected point measure field, which will give me the selected point right here, like this. And then what I did is I did a simple, my tool tip here, if we look at it, my worksheet is only on the pub points. So what I did is I just pub name is aggregate min, minimum distance meters away from whatever hotel parameter, whatever hotel name is in my parameter field. And now when you hover on any one of my pub points, you get to see that Gordon's Wine Bar is 1,345 meters away from the London Edition Hotel. So pretty cool. Uh, I really enjoyed challenge. I really enjoyed this challenge, making this challenge and uh, learning about buffer calculations. Uh, hopefully you can see a couple different use cases for buffer calculations now, and uh, you'll be able to use this in your workflow. Uh, follow me on Twitter at HipsterVizNinja. Like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And um, with that, I say to you, go forth and viz.